Hi guys and welcome back to F1 2017 career mod. Today we are here for episode number 13 at the Malaysian Grand Prix. The end of the season is very close and in terms of upgrades, well we haven't really got anywhere uh, because of the uh, stupid practice programs that I had to get used to and also the, uh, the kind of lack of ability to think forward rather than just kind of short term gains if you like. But no matter, we'll, uh, we'll uh, focus on the reduction in R&D upgrades, uh, well R&D points anyways, for the different departments, especially the uh, the aero department, so we can kind of get those upgrades on earlier in Season 2, if I stay with Haas that is, depending on what offers I get at the end of the season. Uh, but we're kind of using most of the engine components, well the number 4 engine components, and it's a good job we did take that penalty last time out, because if we didn't, well, I think we would be taking one quite now, as a lot of teams are taking them, especially Ferrari, who uh, who don't start very far up the grid, they start just below the top 10. So Raikkonen and Vettel have a lot of work to do if they want to kind of clinch the constructors and kind of have a good end to their season, if you like. Obviously Raikkonen's within a shot, Hamilton's within a shot, and I think Vettel just might be out of it. I'm not exactly sure at this point, but I think it's it's pretty much between Kimi and Lewis Hamilton, no doubt. But going on to the strategy screen, we are going to try uh, the two-stop. Of course, I was trying to see if the mediums would go from lap 10 to lap 28. It doesn't happen. Uh, so we're going on a set of super softs followed by another set of them and onto the softs at the end doing the least amount of laps on the hard well the middle ground of tyre which is the harder compound if you like it's a bit of a waste but nonetheless uh, we'll go to the start of the grid it's five red lights right now for the Malaysian Grand Prix it's lights out away we go and Ocon got a bad start Vettel gets a good start and in fact uh, Van Dorn just gets a poor one he's in a McLaren I mean just say no more I don't really need to, but down the inside of a lot of cars here, we go side by side with Sergio Perez and also a Sauber, and then we just clip Vettel, my rear right, um, tangled with his rear left, well, not front left, that's it. God, where am I going with this commentary? But nonetheless, we hold around the outside of Vettel and try to get past Alonso here, trying to barge him out of the way to give us some room. He would have cut us up otherwise, but down the inside of our team, it lost a bit of traction there, and we had to correct, and now Magnussen just sends us off the track a little bit. Uh, didn't lose too much time there, so the team won't exactly be happy with his move, but of course this is a bonus that I'm still able to stick with him. But into that first right-hander, uh, I kind of got close to him, but I couldn't make a move, so we're going to make a move down to the hairpin here, down to the inside, tight to the apex, squeeze Magnussen out, and that has left him vulnerable to Vettel. The team will not be happy with that because he's going to lose two positions there. One to Vettel, but it's better than losing a position to Mercedes. We might as well lose it to Ferrari. We are, of course, the Ferrari B team, if you like, or one of the Ferrari kind of teams. But nonetheless, we're on lap two, going down the inside of Daniel Kafia here, and I completely misjudged my line and just collided with Kafia, and now I've let Vettel through, which was not the plan, to be fair. I was hoping to try and keep him behind as long as possible, but obviously with my error there, that was kind of impossible, and at this point, I just kind of want to stay with him for like another lap so I can get DRS, but I don't think that'll be the case. He's in a Ferrari, he's in a faster car, and we won't battle with Vettel. It's just as simple as that, because he's just going to zoom off ahead. But yeah, saying that, Perez is now pretty much caught right up to the back of us in his Mercedes-powered Force India. And through turn one, I did try and catch up to Vettel, but I get a poor second phase there. In fact, a really poor exit. So now I've left myself vulnerable to Perez. But I don't think he'll have the legs to try and nip it down the inside. And in fact, he doesn't because we hold our line. We go quite wide to be, fa to be fair on the exit, which was okay. We got a decent exit from that. But now onto lap four, we're behind Nico Hulkenberg in the Renault. And we kind of keep with him through the series of right-handers there. So we're going to try to maybe nip down the inside of this corner here so we pretty much going way too deep and uh, luckily for us we managed to get end up on the racing line so we made a scruffy attempt into a good one but nonetheless we're catching up to Felipe Massa in the Williams car and they've dropped off significantly well Massa has don't know where Stroll is he's probably ahead 
I think he's a, an, an, another two. I think he's got two cars in between him and Stroll. And I think Stroll's just ahead of him, so nonetheless, we uh, nip to the inside of Felipe Massa. Locked up again, like we did with Hulkenberg, uh, trying to go down the inside of him. But it wasn't as scruffy, to be fair. We managed to control that a lot more, but after going past Massa, well, we uh, we continued on until I think we were P2 out of the, uh, the non-stoppers. So I think Verstappen pitted before us. Or maybe he's just at the end of the pit lane. I think I can see him at the end of the pit lane. So uh, we're coming to our pit box on another set of super soft tyres. Have not changed the strategy at all during this race. So we are pretty much doing the, uh, the super soft soft kind of strategy. But where will we come out? Let's see. We come out in P10. But we're behind Sebastian Vettel. And Sebastian Vettel, remember, he was like an, another car ahead of us. So he's lost a load of time behind what looks like to be Verline in a Sauber. So he's getting held up quite significantly. If I'm able to catch up right to the back of him and lose like literally no time. But we're just going to try and fight with Sebastian here. He's obviously going to get held up. We don't want to hold ourselves up. So we're going to go all out for this. We're not going to risk the car. But Vettel goes very slow because Verline goes slow and we go side by side with Sebastian Vettel here and now going down the inside of Pascal Verline into the first right-hander followed by the second right-hander. We just about maintain that. And we are up into P8. We gain two positions there in the span of pretty much three corners. That is that is pretty good going. And now it's on to lap 11. Lance Stroll is ahead of us. He's on the soft tyre. Of course we we're on the faster tyre. We have the advantage here. And we're just going to try and tuck into the back of his slipstream. Try to kind of maintain our line as much as possible. But Stroll gets a really bad run through that corner. And takes some dust up on the, uh, on the apex there, as you could, could have seen, as well on the exit. Uh, but we're right up to the back of him. I go slightly wide there. Nonetheless, didn't lose much time there. But we're going to go down the inside from a long way back. And perhaps to make a move... On Stroll. Stroll's keeping it side by side though. I'm going to try and give him the room. I'm going to obviously maintain my racing line. Just got to be wary that Stroll's there. But then of course I misjudged the gap. And now he's kind of like we just about avoided a spin there. Which was very lucky. And we didn't take off his front wing. So you know what? That's better than the Kofiat incident. Because we didn't cause any damage. Unlike to Kofiat. Which we, uh, we took off his front wing a little bit. Uh, my driving was pretty appalling to be fair on the day. It, this is not one of my strongest circuits either. But then um, onto lap 12, of course Massa came in before us, like way before us, and I think Stroll did as well. And now he's in P6. So we're going to try and do the same what we did to Stroll. Of course the Williams, it seems that the Williams is very slow through this part of the track where, where we're so much faster. It might be the compound of tyre, just not entirely sure. But we get past him, and the next man ahead is Daniel Ricciardo in the Red Bull. I don't think we'll catch up to him, though. The Red Bull is far too quick. Too much downforce, a good engine. Uh, we just don't have the chassis nor the downforce to keep up, to be quite honest. We have the engine, just don't have anything else, really. But Sebastian Vettel in P7 is right onto the back of us here, so he's finally got past Verline and company, who are actually slowing down a lot. But Vettel will have DRS here. And he'll, he'll probably put it up into Rich Mix to try and get past us here. So he's going to go nip, nip into the inside there. I break just to let him past. There's no way I'm fighting Vettel. I don't want to slow myself up. And I don't really want to hold him up either. Because after all, he's the senior Ferrari team. So we kind of want him to get past. Plus it'll help his championship ever so more. But we can't fight with Vettel. Which was the main reason for letting him pass. But then... Uh, Bottas is now in P6, so Vettel's overtaking him. Why is that? Well, we've got a car off in, se in this sector, and that's Bottas. Unfortunately, he's retired, so now Lewis Hamilton is uh, flying the flag for Mercedes only, and both Fer Ferraris are still in, so Ferrari can still outscore Mercedes by a significant margin if all... Well, if all the Ferraris can just, like, get 1-2. If they can get 1-2, that'll be great. But we're coming into the pit lane now, and in fact we had a really bad entry into the pit lane, a very squabbly one, so we've lost quite a lot of time. But now our teammate also is coming in, which is kind of a disappointment because now that's probably going to put him out of the points. Double stacking really does cost you a lot of time in this game. So it's kind of disappointing that me and Magnussen both had the exact same kind of mindset, but I was the leading car at this point. Unfortunately, that's the way it is sometimes with uh, racing. You just get very unlucky like that. And 
coming out of the pit lane, we just go side by side with Sergio Perez Jost and we make brief contact with the back of his tyre. But yeah, Perez has jumped us effectively, just by a little tiny amount though. So we were pretty quick anyway, but we're going to try and stick with Perez. We're going to try and go up the hill to try and look for a move to the inside. Are we going to actually do that? Yes, I think we're going to look to the inside. We do. We go to the apex and we made a very good move there for P8 and Van Dorn is in P7. Of course, he, he won't end up P7 as I cut the corner completely. Get no corner cut one warning from the game. Nice one. But yeah, don't know how Van Dorn's up this early. He must make a pit stop because there's no way he's, he, he has the raw performance to stay there. And in fact, he does come into the pit lane and uh, Perez is right in the back of us. So we didn't get DRS off Van Dorn. So that was kind of a bit sad. And I think the McLaren in some places was a lot faster despite their lack of power as such. But we also nipped past Lance Stroll in the pit lane. So we're now up to P6 defending P6 from Perez as well and Vettel is in P5 so Vettel is pretty much miles ahead of us at this point we're not even going to challenge I think this is pretty much our finishing position or we're, we're in the area where it is our finishing position so we're going to try and defend as much as we can at this point but Perez not able to look for a move though but as we go to this next section of the track which is my weakest section um, I wouldn't be too surprised if Perez caught up to the back of us. And in fact, he does get a good exit from that corner. So he's going to be a very big threat to us. And of course, the uh, the sun obscuring my uh, vision of the racing line. And yes, we do drift into that corner. And that has spoiled our exit a lot. I think it's the compound tyre. I did not get used to it at all. But Perez is going to nip to the outside. I'm going to squeeze him as much as I can to try and kind of put him off. But it doesn't work. But we get a really good run through there and Perez gets a bad exit. So we're able to defend from that point, but up to this section again, it's at this corner. And uh, yeah, we do again drift, but even more aggressively towards the apex. So we kind of had a worse exit from that, which now allows Perez to get the DRS open and shoot down the inside. And he's gonna try and keep the racing line. I'm gonna dart to the inside, a very aggressive move. But, our racing, but of course the racing line goes towards the apex, so we kind of had the advantage there. Give Perez a slight squeeze. Uh, not so that he's off the track, but he did dip a tyre, I think, in the grass. But we're just going to try and put him off. But I'm going to try and let Perez go around the outside of me now, because I'm going to nip to the inside of this first part of the corner. And now towards the second part of the corner, I obviously will have the racing line and the better traction. So in theory, I should come out on top, and indeed, I do. So my kind of forward thinking at this point kind of paid off. It's very, very good to go defensive into turn one and allow the opposition to go around the outside if you're good in the first corner, that is. If, if not, then well, then you might as well just stick to the outside. But through this section, yes, again, it's, it's, it's pretty quick, but it was the compound attire I had to back off because obviously I didn't get used to the grip levels, but Perez tried to look down the outside again and in fact, he does squeeze it to the inside of this corner and it'll turn to the inside of this one. And we get a worse exit. We left him way too much room there. So now he's kind of ahead of us at this point, despite having the compromised line. But we're going to squeeze him to the outside and we're going to try to perhaps defend going into this corner. And we do make slight contact there and we get a good exit of that one. That's on lap 22. So we're pretty much nearing the end of the race. We're not catching up to Ricardo. We're far from it and we're developing a little train. But once again, into the second to last corner, we do drift. I correct it way too much. And that allows Perez to get through. But then we get a better exit in general. So we kind of took a compromise there, which was good. But now Perez is ahead of us. We're going to nip to the inside. Stroll was looking there. But perhaps he'll look down into turn one. So we're going to have to be very, very defensive. Or maybe even more aware that um, we're not only defending against Perez, but Stroll as well. And in fact, Stroll does catch up, gets the slip during a Perez, then me briefly nips to the inside of Perez. This is going to be three wide. I break at the 100 meter mark. I'm backing out completely. No way was it three wide. I was going to lose out either way. I'm going to the marbles and lose a lot of time. But then Perez and Stroll are fighting away. Stroll has, the, uh, squ has been squeezed pretty much to the inside of the track. So we're going to try and perhaps get the slipstream of Perez, but we're obviously on the edge of the track. We can't do anything. And Stroll was blocking us there as well as Perez because we were a lot faster than him. But now Stroll got a compromised line. He tapped Perez's rear tire. So we're going to try and defend through this section. This is very difficult, but 
I give him a much more room. I'll give him a lot more room than what I did on the first one because it was very tight going into the first part, but then I went wide purposely to give him more room. That obviously didn't help us anymore against Perez, but, you know, it would give Stroll room, which is what he needed, to be fair. But we're going to try and catch up to Perez. I obviously was trying really hard at this point to try and keep up to the back of the Force India. And at this point, it looks like we're just sticking with him. But if it's any longer, then we perhaps may lose a place. But saying that, Perez makes an absolute mess of that corner. And we end up going to this corner. I ended up drifting again um, with my poor grip. And then we get the DRS of Perez. Perez tucks into my slipstream. But at this point, I'm very tactical in thinking, well, if I give Stroll the slipstream, I can defend against Stroll more than Perez, which is quite kind of... It, it's a valid reason for doing so because you saw the Williams at the S section before, earlier on in the race, as well with Massa. So I'm able to defend in that section, so I know that, so I'm going to allow Stroll to, to challenge me here. Saying that, I lock up into turn one and Stroll may take advantage at this point, but then it's on to lap 26 and on the main straight going on to lap 27. Stroll does make a good move down the inside there, we're going to hold it. Round the outside, we're going to try and give him as much room as we can. And, of course, he's still side by side. He had a good line there. He had good traction and he had a really good exit. But, of course, we're going to go into the slipstream of Lance Stroll. He has DRS, of course, trying to cancel that effect out. And we're going to nip up to the inside. But then Stroll locks up. And, uh, for some reason, he still made that corner. Very, very surprised. So it must have only been a little lock up. But, nonetheless, we get past him and uh, into P6. But Kimi Raikkonen has won the race, so already they've outscored Mercedes this race. Because Lewis Hamilton obviously uh, couldn't beat Kimi. But yeah, going into the final corner. We've got P6 at a, at a decent track. It's pretty much like China. But of course it wasn't changeable conditions, so it's P6. Raw pace. Not too bad. Despite our qualifying position there. Uh, of like We gained 10 places during that, but... Here's the podium, we've got Vettel in P3, so that means that Hamilton only gets 18 points. So, you know, it's it's obviously, hands down, Ferrari outscoring them. So that's going to help the constructors for Ferrari, definitely, and perhaps will put Kimi a little bit closer to Hamilton and make the championship a lot easier for him to win and uh, make it more difficult for Hamilton which is uh, the, the main aim because obviously Ferrari were looking very strong and now Mercedes have bounced back, but now Ferrari bouncing back again. So um, despite Kevin being held up in the pit lane early on in the race, he, uh, he managed to finish P10 to gain one point, which in my eyes is not a very bad result at all. It's, it's exceptional for him because he's got points. Any points finish is good for us. Uh, but going into the driver's standings now, we're still P7, so close to Max Verstappen. A little bit further away from Felipe Massa. Not too much though. Magnussen still is in 13th. Just behind Nico Hulkenberg. By 3 points. And not too far away from a Stroll to be quite honest. Uh, but yeah Hamilton is leading actually. Um, he was actually the leader before this race. Only by 11 points though. So it's very close. But Ferrari are now 63 points. Ahead of Mercedes in the constructors. So hopefully. Fingers crossed. That if Ferrari can get their act together. And get some good results. They can win this. And obviously maybe clinch the title as well. But after that session we get uh, 661 resource points plus 23 for our first driver bonus. Which is a little bit minimal. But every little helps I suppose. Uh, we gain 3 points over Daniel Kofia in that rivalry. Well we're, we're 10 to 7 so we're kind of ahead of him at this point which is good. Um, we get a little bit more rep from the lower teams. Well a lot more from the lower teams. A lot from Force India for some reason. And also with Ferrari despite allowing Vettel to finish P3. Bit weird, but core competencies, pit stop efficiency is now 20% quicker after that race because of course, of course we completed 25 racing pit stops and yeah, that's all we really need. We need the team to be quicker, allows us to get us further up the grid. Obviously, it's the performance of the car as well, uh, which at this point is not too bad. But yeah, that's going to be it for this part of F1 2017 career mode. The Malaysian Grand Prix was a pretty good uh, race. We still got Sauber, uh, McLaren, Honda not going there, definitely. And Toro Rosso it, interested in us. Um, probably not going to make a move to them if they offer us uh, a kind of contract at the end of the season. I'm going to try and see what offers I get at the end of the season, then make my decision based off that. But next up, we, uh, 
we have Japan, which is a very good track of mine. I really love this track. I am pretty good in there. But this is my season so far. I've got two podiums at hung Hungary and Belgium. Very surprising that I'm getting podiums in the middle of the season because I think that's my strongest tracks, believe it or not. But we're consistent pretty much within the points. We've pretty much finished in the points every race except for Russia and Monaco. So that's pretty good going. We're kind of meeting the team's uh, like kind of objectives, which is to be consistent. But anyway, that's going to be it from me. If you enjoyed, leave a like on the video. It really does help me out. Subscribe for more F1 2017 career mode with Haas. Maybe another team. Who knows? And until next time, I shall see you all then. Take care.